On this episode of Hot Rod Hoarders, we're documenting the holy grail of barn finds, a 1932 Ford three-window coupe gasser with legit drag racing history in this area. This thing sat in a chicken house for 45 years, but now it's back on the road again, and it's been reunited with some of its previous owners for the ultimate racer reunion. Before I get too carried away, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below, Check out my merch. I've got t-shirts and hoodies and other cool stuff. Thank you for continuing to support the channel. So I first came to know this car back in 2011. I was walking around at the swap meet at the NSRA Street Rod National South in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I saw this 32 Ford three window coupe. And I knew immediately that it was out of my price range, way out of my league, but it was so cool. It was priced at $32,000 for a car, you know, with no motor, just a really solid and good 32 Ford three window coupe body. I had an inside track to some history on this car because my mentor, Jerry Berger, did a photo shoot on it for Hot Rod Deluxe magazine. This photo shoot was pretty much straight out of the barn, no engine, no transmission, but what it allowed him to do was reach out to Red Stanley, and he also talked with local historian Larry Rose who's able to help fill in some gaps on the history of this car. The earliest history I have on this car goes back to about 1957, and that's when Red Stanley worked a deal with one of his buddies to trade cars. Now, they didn't trade engines, just bodies. And Red traded a 1940 Ford two-door sedan for this 1932 Ford three-window coupe. They kept their engines, the other guy kept his flathead V8, and Red kept his 347 cubic inch Pontiac V8. Red immediately put the Pontiac engine in the 32 and he went drag racing with it. He raced at a brand new track that was just up the road from him in Hickson, Tennessee. It was called Brainerd Optimus Drag Strip. And that track, even though it's in a different location now, is still in operation today. When Red put the Pontiac motor in this car, he used a Ford three-speed transmission and he had to use an adapter to make it all work. And he said he only used second and third gear so that he wouldn't blow up the original Ford rear end out back. So, you know, naturally as things progressed, he did upgrade the rear end, he upgraded to a more modern transmission, and actually the next year he upgraded to a newer Pontiac engine. This one was a 370 cubic inch engine, and it only lasted one season because the next year he put another new Pontiac engine, a 389 cubic inch engine in there, which he had bored and stroked, it had three Rochester carburetors on it and lots of custom stuff on the inside. So this car was really getting serious by 1959. Unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of old pictures of this car, but I've got one that is just, it, you couldn't ask for a better picture. It's awesome. It's from Brainerd Optimus Drag Strip in Hickson. It's from the late 50s. It's iconic. You've got the flag guy in the middle. You've got the 32 Ford sitting in the far lane, ready to launch and then you've got a 40 Ford in the near lane. The cool thing to me is that both cars were engine swapped. The 32 had the Pontiac engine, and the 40 Ford had a supercharged Chevrolet engine in it. Now, at the time, our local tracks, they didn't really designate, you know, like a A gas car or a double A, which would have been supercharged. These cars, even though they had wildly different setups, they raced each other on a regular basis. Around this time, Red put a roll bar in it, he cut out the insides of the doors. You can see the rough torch cut marks. Just trying to cut weight out of this thing, trying to make it light, trying to make it a little bit safer, and trying to make it competitive because the car was running in pretty much the top category at the time. It was A-gas. So, you know, he had a big engine. It was a lightweight car. He had to really tune this thing to make it competitive against cars that were running, you know, a lot wilder combinations. As Red was getting more serious with the car, he made some suspension changes. He made the car sit a little higher in the front by just basically putting a block in there to, to raise the ride height. Then for the rear, he put these really long ladder bars that were made out of galvanized steel. They went all the way up to the wishbone mounts on the front end. So basically, the front and rear suspension mounting points were off of the same bracket. Really crazy setup but it seemed to work for the car. I mean, these things were just experiments on wheels. You just had to try stuff until it worked. Red ran the car locally at tracks in Hickson, Tennessee, Harriman, Loudon, Maryville, 
but he did make a long haul one time. This was in the summer of 1959. He went to Chester, South Carolina to a national event. And the car won its class. I mean, pretty awesome stuff for a local guy to make a big long haul and to come back with a trophy. Fast forward two years to 1961 and Robert Nance takes over the car. He's running it with a Mopar wedge engine, still running in A-gas, still competing really well in local ranks. Red Stanley and Robert Nance were racing partners for a few years after the 32 Ford exchange. Red actually drove for Robert. He drove a Henry J, he drove a 40 Willys Coupe, he drove an Anglia, all of them gas class cars, all of them very successful. Around this time is when the car got a paint job. You'll notice in the old pictures that it's black, now it's white. Well, that happened in the early 60s. The car just keeps evolving and changing and even changing owners through the years. So eventually a guy named Leslie Anderson bought the car. He put a Ford motor in it, a 427, continued running in A-gas, continued just tweaking on the setup year after year, but it eventually was retired in 1967. That was the last that this car raced. It was the last that this car was even ever seen. That brings us to the modern era of this car's history. David Turner is the guy who bought the car from Leslie Anderson. David ended up selling it. The car went out west. It got a Buick nailhead engine. It got magnesium wheels. The, the guy got it running and driving, fixed a few things on it, and sold it. Went back across the country to a guy in Virginia. His name is Al Castine. And what Al did was he rounded up all the previous owners, all those guys like Red Stanley, Leslie Anderson, brought them together to Ringgold, Georgia to check out the car, swap stories, and just hang out for a little bit. And I got to be a part of that reunion as well. I took pictures and got to hang out and hear some of these stories and hear some of the tales about this car. And that's what makes it cool to me is that not only is it a car that got found in a barn and got you know, brought back out into the light of day again, the car's got history and we know it way back to 1957. You know, this thing raced for 10 years under various engines and owners and configurations right here in the Chattanooga, Tennessee area, and the car lives on today. I wanna say a huge thank you to Lance at Speed and Chrome Illustrated for letting me use some pictures and videos of this car in action. These clips came from the Eagle Field drag several years ago, and this is actually the first time the car came out west. It has since gone back east and then out west again, uh, but I wanted to show you this thing moving and making noise and out there on the drag strip doing what it's supposed to do. Really cool clips. I'm very thankful for Lance for sending those to me. You can check him out. He's got a YouTube channel. It's called Speed and Chrome Illustrated. He's got a Facebook page, Instagram page. Be sure to subscribe to his channel for more old school hot rod coverage. I've enjoyed following along with this car and kind of seeing its journey as it goes across the country and back and forth. And then of course the research part of it and finding out all the history and hearing those stories from Red Stanley and all the other previous owners. It's been a really fun experience, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I love doing this type of stuff. I hope to keep doing it each and every week here on the channel. Thank you for watching.